What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great day. It's Taco Tuesday. I hope all your taco dreams came true. I, I'm kind of angry right now. I'm hangry. I didn't have no damn tacos today. I really wish I had some tacos. But it's been kind of a busy day. I've been running all over the place, working on that farmhouse uh, that's about an hour and a half away and stuff. So by the time I get there, work on it, get back home, I didn't feel like cooking anything because I'm dealing with the Cowboys drama. So, you know, uh, it's funny because um, I was talking, I did a video last night after I did my live stream talking about Lord Brunson getting kind of clamped down by uh, Terrence Parsons about him talking about Dak Prescott and stuff. And I see he responded on here uh, saying, basically, I'm getting roasted on my own channel. You know, that's, that's part of the business. That's the thing about YouTube. If you're going to be on YouTube, you got to have a tough skin. You know, I've been told that, that by, by legitimate people now, le legitimate ones now, okay, that who is Mark Holmes? You know, he's hiding in his mama's basement wearing, you know, his wife's panties and things like that. I have been having, you know, I have been crapped on all the time and stuff, but it's okay. That's part of the business if you're going to be on the YouTube. You're going to have people that like you and you got people that hate you. But I like to think of what... Um, Denzel Washington says, those who can do, those who can't, talk about those who can. So can you or can you not? Or are you just going to sit around and talk about others? There you go. So I guess you could say, um, I am talking about others that are doing. So I guess I can't do. But those out there that are sitting behind their keyboard that aren't doing YouTube are talking about somebody who is. So can they do? There you go. Be that all as it may. Be that all as it may. Here's the thing. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm trying to understand the firestorm, okay? Sean and RJ last week on Friday, basically threw Micah Parsons kind of under the bus. Now, some people will say they're just saying that they heard some people were saying that Micah Parsons' stick is getting a little bit worn out and that some of these people would be rather to see him go. Now, you know, in life, n nobody has everybody that they like that likes them. Nobody. Nobody. I got a lot of people that like me, and I got a lot, probably equally amount of people that hate me. And that's cool. So I don't know exactly who it is that does or does not. And if you work in, you know, your job, there's people on your job that like you. And I'm sure there's people on your job that don't like you. So that is the nature of the beast, so to speak. Um, but I think about when I hear that Micah Parsons stuff is getting thin, I think about somebody like Rolando McLean. Okay. Rolando McLean was a guy that had all kinds of talent, but Rolando McLean was a person who didn't want to practice. You know, you get a, I'm going to stay in the weight room today, and he's probably just sleeping on the on on the bench press. You know what I'm saying? That's somebody that kind of wears you thin because you're out here trying to teach and practice and all that, and he doesn't want to go. Or somebody like, say, David Irving. David Irving, who literally went and said to the coach, the coach had, you know, Jason Garrett, had he had more talent rolling out of the bed than Jason Garrett had in his whole career. And he liked to get high, high, so to speak. I would say a player like that would be getting thin. But talent trumps all. Because, see, let me give you an example of somebody who wore thin and they decided to act upon it. And that is Charles Haley. Charles Haley, in the prime of his career, was San Francisco. Charles Haley, who admits that he was he's bipolar and he's getting medication for it. Charles Haley, who is, yeah, I'd say a handful. But unless you got like King Kong hands, 
Okay, that's how big a handful Charles Haley is. You cannot argue with his ability, his tenacity, and his greatness. But Charles could wear thin on everybody. I know from my own personal experience at JMU, okay, the stories I could tell, all I'm going to say is you better keep your head on a swivel. Anytime, Charles, anyway, I don't care. We're talking about the football field. I'm not talk, I'm talking about if you're in the game room. I'm talking about if you're in the locker room. I don't care if you're in the, the, the swimming pool. I don't care if you are in D Hall. You had to keep your head on a swivel because he was, he, Charles wore a lot of people thin. And San Francisco, and, and I'm going to say part of the reason why he went after Steve Young is we did not do a lot of winning at JMU. When he was there, it's not like the JMU now that's winning national championships and stuff in the playoffs and things and, and bowl games. This is JMU football in its infancy. And we were fortunate to have Charles Haley. OK. When Charles got to San Francisco and they started winning, he owned that shit. Winning was everything. And I wish we had more people that that literally lived and died with a game. When they lost this game, he blamed Steve Young. He went after Steve Young. And that was the impetus that said, he is definitely worn too thin to the point where this shit's broke. We got to get rid of him. Now, I will say, here's the thing about players. I don't see any of that with Micah Parsons. I don't see any of that with Micah Parsons. I'm trying to understand what it is that Micah Parsons does that's wearing thin. What, the fact that he is actually doing a podcast on his day off for 30 minutes a day? As opposed to being, you know, in the strip club getting tipsy? Or racing a Lamborghini and crashing into a wall and hitting other people? That kind of thing? Well, see, here's the thing. Jimmy Johnson had, had some problems with Charles Haley. And he figured out a way to keep it from being a distraction. Listen to this. You're up and then James Harris. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, let me first say congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, watching that live on television, that raw emotion was just beautiful. Um, I have so many questions for you. I think about the only way I could get them in is to get a cooler beer and head out on <laughs> and go fishing with you. <laughs> hey, Mark. But um, leaving the University of Miami and coming to the Dallas Cowboys, and at that time they were basically broke busted and thoroughly disgusting to watch having gone from the pinnacle down to the depths what was that like and the second part of this question would be i uh, played football at jmu with charles haley and knowing the character that he is and all the personalities that you had with the cowboys how were you able to mold them and keep them focused on the grand prize which was winning well you know first of all you know back on it and, and they say it was an easy decision to leave the University of Miami you know but you know we had gone through four straight seasons where we played a national schedule and been on national television every other week and only lost two regular season games and so we had a powerhouse football team and I knew it was going to continue that way because we had a great you know group of talent and then going to Dallas, you know, Tom Landry's one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, they had had three straight losing seasons there at the bottom of the NFL at three and 13 because they just didn't have any talent. And, you know, and obviously there were some older players that uh, helped us, uh, you know, in winning our Super Bowls. But a lot of it had to do with, you know, I, I brought in Tony Wise, my offensive line coach, and he – he put together what is considered one of the greatest offensive lines in, in NFL history. But he did it with a, a free agent defensive tackle, Mark Tuanay, at left tackle. He did it with a left guard where the previous stats, staff said get rid of him because he is too fat, Nate Newton. <laughs> we took a, a third-round pick, a 245-pound offensive guard. I asked Tony, I said, can you convert him to a center? He said, I'll make him into a center. So we moved Stepnoski to center. And then we took a seventh round pick, Kevin Gogan, uh, who had struggled his early years. We moved him to guard. 
and took a third round pick, Eric Williams, at right tackle. So, you know, those players hadn't developed, but Tony Wise was able to develop them into a great offensive line. And so, you know, the combination of having some great assistant coaches and acquiring a lot of talent with 51 trades in five years, we were able to win that Super Bowl. So it was a great feeling. Thank you very much on that. I'll follow up you about Charles Haley. Yes. He's a character. <laughs> he's he is a character. character but he loop. is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, you know, Charles and I developed a great relationship after a few uh, rocky roads uh, there early in his career at Dallas. Uh, we had a couple of run-ins, but we, we really got together. You know, really, he came into my office after I had berated him a, a couple of times at, at one of the ball games. And he said, Coach, he said, if you will just get on to me one-on-one -on -one in your office, he said, I'll do anything in the world for you. I, I love playing for you. He said, but just don't embarrass me in front of the other players. And I said, you know, Charles, I, I, I may not always be able to do that, but I'll try. But from that time forward, we had a great relationship. And he was a big part of us winning Super Bowls. Thank you very much. And how about them Cowboys? <laughs> So I should have trademarked that. <laughs> so James here's the thing. So I want you to understand this, that, you know, Charles Haley stick got really, really thin where San Francisco said, nah, bro, we don't need that. And what you have to understand, what you have to understand is the Cowboys figured out a way that we know he's eccentric, Jimmy Johnson, how to work with them and things and get the most out of them and created a power shift from San Francisco winning those Super Bowls to the Cowboys winning three. Now, I don't know what idiot or jackass that looks at somebody who's getting 12-plus sacks a season and say, you know what, I'm tired of that guy. I'm tired of that guy. You know what, I want me a guy that gets along and does what I want him to do and everything and is a nice guy, and he gets a sack a season. Let's go ahead and get a bunch of those guys. Are you crazy or just plain stupid? Seriously. Seriously, what are we talking about here? Why is it we've got guys that are breaking records at the top of the game, top two or three, four in, in, in the NFL right now, young, ready to play, and everybody wants to freaking get rid of them? Are you stupid? Are, seriously, you find a way to make that shit work. This stuff is crazy that Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones have gotten in here. You go through, you trash people and everything else, and you've got this whole mob mentality that they're ready. Yeah, it's it's Micah Parsons. He ain't showing we, If we just get rid of that guy, ah, let's tar and feather him. What are you kidding me? <laughs> Seriously, people? Are you kidding me? You know what stick was getting thin? Guys like Tristan Hill. Guys like David Irving, that's the kind of guys that you, you make him sound out to be. Guys that didn't bust a grape. <coughs> guys that did absolutely nothing and were a pain in the ass. I'll take a guy who's a pain in the ass that's performing. Now get over it, people. Jesus Christ. The longer I do this, the more...